OK, thank you for tuning in to look at my brief lacing. I was looking at different shoes and different lacing systems. These Scarpa approach shoes have no dedicated uh, ratcheting points, just purely holes to keep it tight. So you tie them up tight, you're able to climb a bit. There's not really much you can do, just tie them tight. It uses flat laces, so as I guess they don't get tangled on things. Um, but yeah, that's the lacing system. Then you move to traditional old, these are my ancient brushes, absolutely amazing boots. They have little hitches on the side where you can put in a bit of pressure, but to be honest, normal socks, you just tie them up, not too much pressure, tie them up as you would, and they are stunning. Um, you don't need any fancy lacing systems. These are heavy duty mountaineering boots with a little bolt, so they have um, changeable soles so it'll go from flexible to not and this has really advanced lacing system it has little ratchets and it actually has bearings in the um, lace eyelets as you can see um, because this has got such an advanced lacing system you kind of just follow their instructions you don't need to do a great deal to get a really good fit because they're so thick and padded and you're going to be in deep snow um, it's not as if you're going to be doing mega miles trekking in them um, ultimately um, and as I say they're so padded. These are the most popular sort of boots, a relatively lightweight, bit of an all-terrain one. Um, they've got dedicated eyelets up to halfway when you have the lace lock here. Um, this is pretty good, it holds the lace intact but there are lots of things you can do with relatively thin boots and you can over tighten them quite easily. Um, when I wear them I wear a two sock system, a line sock and a thick Bridgedale Merino sock. Um, when you've got them on, make sure there's no fluff in them, no grit in the bottom, because if you're trekking for a long way, it's a nightmare. And then you so I simply lace it. You can lace it the normal way, as you would imagine you do. So going over the top, up through the lacing bits, and do a double knot at the top, making sure the lace is uh, in place, the tongue is in place. Um, do it up. I always do a double knot because I really hate sh loose shoe laces. Um, quite tight, um, not my favourite way. Um, I found my feet swell up a tremendous amount when I'm hiking, especially at altitude. So the way I lace is I go down through the locking bit and then do a, just a basic hitch. That way your foot is locked in place. And then the next bit, you know, they always used to say, do your lace boots up as tight as you can. The next bit I almost do as loose as I can. There's hardly any pressure on them at all. And I also lean right forward in my boot, as if putting a lot of pressure on the tongue. Um, this way, they are far comfier to wear. And when your feet swell up, it's not an issue. Um, this tried and tested method, even wearing two socks, walking at altitude. That way, they have a bit of space to breathe. There's a little bit of flex in the top bit as well, because you haven't done it up too tight. It is really good. Um, as I say, this is the way I would recommend if you're doing long treks where your feet are going to get really hot, um, I guess if they get really cold they'll need to be tighter, but if you're wearing two socks and you're trekking, it's not going to happen, is it? Uh, you could also, if you wanted to be doubly sure, go down over every single hitch. If you're going down, then it's even more locked in place. But again, this doesn't leave much room for expansion. Um, but yeah, as I say, Depending on the shoe, it varies as to what you can do. The most popular boot is the sort of this one, the Salomon one. All terrain, does a bit of everything. And so you need to have lots of options for lacing. And make sure your sock system is good. Um, twin sock system, tried and tested, fantastic. A lot of people go around the back. Again, I can't see the point in that because it's just... Uh, well, I don't do that. Okay, these are some really old Salomon Gore-Tex boots I've had for donkey's years and all the laces I've snapped because I've made them all into fire bows and ruined them. So I sent these laces, um, they're Mr. Lacey Heike's laces and they're um, quite a popular lace out there and I really like the box because it gives you all the details of everything you need to know on there. It tells you how many eyelets, how long, how wide. Um, it also says that they are hydrophobically treated. So I'm guessing if your shoelace does come undone and you're walking in the mud, they will not soak in. So it's almost like they've been nick waxed or like some down jackets. 
they're treated so water won't stick to them, which is really good, because I really hate having soggy laces. But these are some flat ones I thought I'd just give a go. Um, a lace is a lace to me. The one thing I was slightly worried about was if they are treated, waterproofly treated, they might not grip very well at the top when you tie your knot. Um, however, when I've tied a, when I tied a knot at the end of this video, um, it seems to stick quite well. So I, I well as well as any normal lace. So I was quite impressed. They seem pretty tough, and the little eyelet things at the top they do have a specific name. What it is, don't know. Um, they seem really tough because quite often with a lot of my boots the laces are shoddy and the little plastic wrap around comes flayed and then once that happens you can't do anything. Um, but yeah, Mr Lacey, I'm going to do a bit more of a review on the laces on my website which is www.kernoutdoors.com so have a look. So that's what Mr Lacey's look like on some ancient Salomon boots. Nice.